Well, as we were just talking about going to break, Memorial Day just one weekend away. In mm -hmm. fact, it's this weekend. Unofficially, they kick off to summer. Yeah. Lindsay's in Hannibal this morning talking boat safety. I see tip number <laughs> one, life jacket. Got to have them on. And there she is. Yes. Absolutely, um, and it's the unofficial start to boating season as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been out here for, I don't know, half hour maybe. And we've already seen somebody uh, go on the river. So people are boating early and they are going to be boating often. Uh, Sergeant Jeff Creech with the Missouri State Highway Patrol is with us this morning. And actually you guys have kind of encompassed the division of marine safety as well. Yes, we have. This will be the second summer that the Highway Patrol and the Water Patrol has merged and come under the Highway Patrol. But we're all state troopers now, but we still do the same job duties as the Water Patrol did before. Okay, so we're talking life jackets right now. Um, the one that I'm wearing right now is actually the most safe one to have, and why is right. that? Well, this is classified as a type two life jacket, and it's designed that if you're knocked unconscious, if you fall out of the boat, knocked unconscious, or water ski and knocked unconscious, it's designed to float you on your back. If you land face down, it's designed it will float you back over on your back. And now this is a, a typical life jacket that we would normally see. Yeah. Um, explain a little bit about it. This one, you, it'll be called a vest, you know, a life jacket vest, but it's a type three life jacket. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a vest type, but it's also designed, it'll float you. Mm -hmm. They should all be Coast Guard approved. Make mm -hmm. sure you read the label, Coast Guard approved, but it's not designed if you get knocked out and unconscious, you could stay face down in it, mm -hmm. but it will float you above the surface. It might float you on your back and it might not. Now, the most important thing for kids is to have a right. proper fitting life vest. Right. Um, how do you know what, how it's supposed to right. fit? All life jackets inside, all Coast Guard approved life jackets and safety devices, they'll all have a label inside of them. Every one of them will tell you that whether it's for a youth, a child, or an adult. So there's three different sizes of life jackets. It'll give you the chest size and the amount of weight that that life jacket will float you above the surface of the water. Okay, cool. Now I know a lot of people when they're on the river, they're going to be wearing their bathing suits. They're probably going to... Um, not want to have any tan lines, no tan lines, no tan lines. Yeah. Um, but this is another option for a life, life Correct. jacket. Correct. This is also Coast Guard approved. Mm -hmm. A lot of our guys on the water patrol, highway patrol division have these. It's just a fanny pack. Mm -hmm. You strap it on. If you go into the water, if you're conscious, you can still pull the strap. Mm -hmm. The life jacket will deploy out and you can still put your life jacket on. But it's one that you still need to be conscious to apply. Okay. Also on the boat, we need to have these. Explain yeah. a little bit about that. This Most people call it just a seat cushion, but it's a type four life-saving device. It's also Coast Guard approved. Mm -hmm. to, you don't wear this on your back. A lot of people <laughs> say, oh, I'll put it on my back. If you put it on your back, it's gonna put your face down in the water. You're not gonna be able to breathe. If you do have to lose it, use it as a life-saving device, you just put your arms through it and put it on your chest and float on it. But all boats are required to have some type of life-saving device for each person on board, and different class boats have to have different type of life-saving devices. Now you're talking about class two, class three, class four. What is the difference yeah. between that? Well, Missouri it goes class A. Or federally, it's class A, class one, two, and three. A class A is anything less than 16 feet, and then class one and up is 16 feet and over. So okay. on a class A, which is less than 16, they're just required some type a life-saving device it can be the seat cushion version mm -hmm. or a wearable for each person but 16 feet and over it requires a, a wearable life jacket for each person on board or a skier if they're being towed and not wearing one they have to have one in the boat for them and they also have to have one throwing device for the boat 16 feet and over all right we've got plenty more to talk about including what you need to have on your boat if you're planning on going out in the river this or on a lake uh, this summer uh, what much much more coming up later on in the show all right. Thank this you, is Lindsay. good because I, I mean, I've been out on a boat before, but I don't mm -hmm. own a boat and it's not something I do all the time. So it's really good to know all this information. Right. Welcome yes. back at 619. Man, if you're looking at this weather forecast the next week, it's going to be warm, warm enough to be out on a boat. And that's mm -hmm. exactly where Lindsay is this morning. In fact, I'm calling her Lindsay boat this morning. Good morning. You look I'm very, on a boat. You look very tall. Are you the queen <laughs> of the world or what? I'm on a boat. What about Bob? That's what's going on. <laughs> 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 yeah, we are talking about boat safety. Uh, Memorial Day weekend is coming up, uh, and we want to make sure that you're safe on a boat. I have one life jacket on. Actually, I have two. This is also a, a fanny pack life jacket. You just pull this, and actually, I was playing with it earlier, and I almost inflated it, so we're just going to leave that alone. But we, there are some things that you need to know if you have a boat and you plan on going on the water. Sergeant Jeff Creech with Missouri State Highway Patrol is with us also. Uh, this is his boat, not mine. So uh, what do we need to have on the boat if you're a boat owner and you're planning on going on the water? 
Okay. Missouri law requires you anything on a boat that's 16 feet and over, you have to have a wearable life jacket for each person on board and for a skier if they're being towed. And the life jackets need to be out and accessible. We have a lot of people when I do a safety inspection or stop a boat on the boat, they have to be out of the compartments. A lot of people like to stick them down in the compartments and shut the lid. Well, in case of emergency, it's more than one step to get to it and you're not going to get to it in time before you need it. So they need to be out somewhere in the boat and be accessible. You need to have a, a throw cushion, which is the square mm -hmm. little throwable device. You need to have a horn or a whistle and you'll also need to have a fire extinguisher for the boat. Any boat that uses combustible fuel has to have a fire extinguisher on board. And now you were talking earlier it's important to shake it. Yes, these have a, a dry chemical powder in them and even bouncing around in the boat in the summertime, you know, if the boat's been stored all winter you need to take it out. You need to be able to shake it up and make sure you can hear the powder moving inside because if it's pressurized but if you go to spray it you probably won't get anything out of it if it's caked up in the bottom. And also after being stored all winter, you need to make sure I get a lot of these during boat inspections. Look in the nozzle. Mud daubers love this little, as a little home inside. If you go to spray, you won't get anything out. And the different types of fire extinguishers, make sure you check the gauge. This one's in the green. That's where it should be. They also have a little green, some that have green buttons on top. You push the button in. As long as the button comes out, it's got enough pressure. It's still a good fire extinguisher. Now people, you know, they go out boating, they go lay out on the boat, but some people like to water ski. Uh, and this is a, a water skiing belt. This is old. You don't see a lot of these anymore. It's a ski belt. This is not a Coast Guard approved life-saving device. A lot of people try to wear them. It's not a life-saving device. If you're water skiing, you can get by with wearing it because you're not required to wear them one way or that, but it will not count as a life-saving device for a person on board. The problem with one of these, you might be unconscious, you might float with your feet up in the air. You know, it's just to hold you above the water a little bit, but you never know which end's going to be up. And now you, we were talking off camera about having a flag on board as well. Yes. Uh, in Missouri, there's a law that if you're towing a skier and the skier's down or you got a swimmer down in the water on the lakes of Missouri, from 11 a.m. until sunset, where well, you can't ski after sunset, when the boat's dead in the water, you need to raise your flag so it's visible for 360 degrees. It needs to be an orange or a red, about 12 inch square flag. And then when you start pull the skier up or the swimmer comes in the boat and you start moving again, you lay the flag down. That's just a visible for other boaters to know that you've got somebody in the water. And now after sunset, are there light requirements that you have to have? Yes. It, half hour after sunset to half hour before sunrise, you're required to have lights on your boat. It'd be red and green on the front and a white it's visible for 360 called a stern light on the back of the boat. All right, very good information. Memorial Day weekend is coming up only a week away, which means summer is unofficially kicked off. Of course, summer doesn't technically start until the end of June, but it looks like it's going to be a great weekend to get out on the boat and uh, have some fun this summer, but make sure you're safe when you're out there as well. Very important, and today is going to feel like the last day of spring, I think, because summer is going to get issued, ushered in here by about Wednesday. Whether you like it or not, the unofficial start to summer this weekend. I like it. And Lindsay likes it too. She's out there on a boat. <laughs> I do. Well, I'm next to a boat. I, I don't know if you've seen that news blooper. There's a, a lady who's doing a live shot at a concert and she's just standing there going, what? What? That's what I feel like because the train just went by, but <laughs> it's all gone. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about boat safety. Uh, next week it kicks off. I can't believe it's here already, but I am definitely ready for it as well. And we hope that you are too. We want to get you ready. We want to get your boat ready so that there, uh, so that nothing bad happens to you on the river this or uh, um, I'm Mark Twain Lake also this this summer. <laughs> Jeff Creech is a sergeant with uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol and you are talking about boat safety. Yes. Life jackets, very, very important to have. Very important. Very important to have the proper size, adult for an adult, child for a child, and make sure they're out and accessible so you can get to them in case of an emergency takes place. And now seven-year-olds in Missouri have to have one on? Any child under the age of seven. Anytime they're on the water, they have to have it on unless they're in an enclosed cabin like down in a cuddy cabin on a large cruiser boat. They okay. have to have it on. All right, and uh, now you guys have, you do complimentary inspections. Correct. If you're out on the waterways and you see us on the river on any of the lakes or the waterways, if you're not sure if you've got everything that you need, you know, flag us down. We'll be happy to do a safety courtesy inspection for you. And once we do an inspection and you got all the proper equipment that you need to have, we've got our little sticker that we put on your boat. And that way, from a distance, we know that you've already had a courtesy safety inspection for that year. And also we put out a, a little booklet on our handbook for Missouri boating laws. Mm -hmm. If you see one of us and you're not sure, you can get one of these from one of each officer on the water or over around Mark Twain Lake. I know I personally take some to the businesses and the marinas over there so that they have supplies there that you can pick one up at, but it covers everything, all of our laws and regulations. Now, before you're getting ready to go on the water, what should you do? Is there a checklist of things that you should go through? 
Yes. One important thing is is to check the weather before you leave the house because the way the weather changes in Missouri, we all know that in the Channel 7 Weather Lab, you know, <laughs> check them so that you know what the weather is. You know, a storm can come up, you're not paying attention, you get caught on the water. Make sure the weather, make sure, let somebody know, take a cell phone this day and time. In Missouri, you can also call Star 55 for the water emergency just like you can on the highway. So Star 55 will respond to help you with the emergency. But let somebody know where you're going and know what part of the lake you're on. We've got called out at midnight before, somebody missed an Mark Twain Lake. It's 18,000 acres to go cover, you know, so know where you're at on the lake when you do call in for some help, you know, so just be alert of that. Also, your, your trailer, you need to make sure your trailer lights are working, and if you're going to be on the water after dark, make sure your navigation lights work before nighttime sets in. It's also a good idea to take a flashlight with you in case your navigation lights go out after dark while you're out there so that other boats can see you on the waterway. Anything else that you want boaters to know, whether they're riding in a boat or, uh, or driving a boat? It, uh, riding in the boat, it's illegal to ride on the gunnels of the boat, which is up on the top of the sides of the boat. And it's also illegal to ride on the bow of the boat if it's not made for it. It has to have adequate railings, anything at least six inches tall, but not more than 18 inches tall, then you can ride on the front of the boat. And it's also illegal to ride on the deckings of, over the, of the rear of the boats. I mean, if you fall off, look what's at the back of the boat. Look what's going to run over you if you do fall out of the boat. So. And, of course, don't drink in boat. Absolutely. Don't drink in boat at all. It impairs your judgment. The sun and the heat, as I said before, it impairs your judgment enough out there and you're tired. Alcohol just adds to that. All right. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Lots of great boating safety tips. Um, people are going to be out on the river. Make sure that you're looking for them and you keep your eyes open as well. Thanks, Lindsay. I love the very first tip. It says check the weather. So yeah. if you're boating today, yeah. here's your weather check.